Okay, Kimmy, I know it's been a while since you or anybody here on this grid has driven an F1 car the longest down season ever. But I'm just checking that you remember the correct procedure for the first installation laps and warming up the brake. Yeah, 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 leave me alone. I know what I'm doing. Okay, do you want a hand getting in the car? No, no, no. Like I said, just leave me alone. Yeah, Kimmy. You know what you're doing, of course. Look, I'm just gonna get in the bloody car. Uh, Kimmy? What? You sure you know what you're doing? Yeah. Well, if that is the case, why is the front of the car behind you? Oh, shit. Yeah! Hello, welcome to Gareth Jones on Speed, another virtual edition brought to you by the technology of Zoom. She's Sarah. Hello. He's Zog. Hello. I'm Gareth, and I dare say all three of us are absolutely cock-a-hoop that this weekend, after seven months of no racing, F1 is back. Who flipping Ray? Sarah, are you excited or apprehensive about season starting and we don't even know how many races are going to be in the season or there's going to be no audience, it's going to be weird or is it going to be great? I think it's going to be very exciting that a lot of people will be watching. It's the day we've all been waiting for. It's been 15 weeks since Australia and a lot has obviously happened. The teams have been in lockdown. When they get an opportunity, they've been working on their cars. So we could see some exciting racing and I think, hooray, that some sport is finally happening. <laughs> yeah, hooray. So, okay, you feel the same, I'm sure. Absolutely, yeah. I can't wait to see some real racing again. You know, much as I've enjoyed some of the virtual racing that we've had in recent weeks, particularly the virtual Le Mans, which looked fantastic. Didn't it just? It was pretty convincing, wasn't it? Yeah, it really was. But in the end, those things are a substitute, a slightly poor substitute for the real thing. And we're going to get the real thing this weekend. So, yeah. Can't wait for the real thing. The real thing. Even better than the real thing, as Bono once said to me. Mm -hmm. The prospect of the season, I think, is arguably better than ever for two reasons. I think the drivers and the teams probably feel the same as we do. They just want to get going. They want to prove themselves. And second of all, with a season that we don't know how many races there are going to be, yes, we know there are a minimum of eight at the moment, but there could be more. Every team is going to be doing their level best to score points at every opportunity because there may be no more opportunities. I think this could actually work in the benefit of the season, it could be a more exciting season than we would have had if it had started in March and ran for 22 races. Would either of you agree? I kind of feel, I suppose, a bit ambivalent about that. On the negative side, the teams are so good in the regular course of things at maximising every opportunity they have. You know, they really don't leave anything on the table when there's an opportunity to be had. I don't think that current circumstances are going to push them any harder so in that sense i don't think that's necessarily the case but then again these are odd times let's see what happens i'm sure they're all going to be very motivated just because they're getting back down to doing what they love doing and they've been waiting to get back to it just like we've been waiting to see them do it Sarah? Yeah, well, I was just going to say, lads, <laughs> that there will be some competition. I think there'll be a lot of teams wanting to put their best foot forward. I think Renault, for example, they will want to get one up on McLaren in a very short space of time because they were lack last last year and they fell short. And I think Red Bull could be in there with maybe a chance of coming in after Mercedes. I think they might be competition for Ferrari this year. So I think you're right. There's a lot of points to be had in a short space of time. And with drivers' championships and constructors' championships on the line, I think it will be a lot of healthy competition. So it will be really interesting to see how the cars face up to one another, especially since testing was so long ago and since they've all had an opportunity now to further work on their cars. So... I think we could be in for an exciting couple of weeks Yeah, in that regard. It's interesting. I mean, you mentioned the fact that, you know, obviously we've got a shorter season, fewer races. Now, that does mean that there's little random events that have a big impact on one race, whether it's somebody making a mistake and going off or one team having a particular technical problem at one track that they hadn't anticipated or just couldn't foresee. 
you know, those random events are going to have a much bigger effect on the season as a whole because there are fewer races for those things to average out over. So, yeah, what we're going to be left with is a slightly less predictable season. I think you're right, Zog. I think each point is sort of worth more yeah. because the consequences of getting something wrong yeah. are greater. I agree. Absolutely. And with a season where you don't know when it's going to end, you've got to work hard to lock it down as early on as possible. You can't let Mercedes get away. I know it's no different to any other season, Zog. I take your point, but... It's kind of like it's under a magnifying glass this season. I think there'll be an even greater tension than there normally is. Well, Lewis Hamilton is on his way to equaling a world record of a seventh world title. And I think who comes in second, third and fourth would literally be up for grabs because Max Verstappen, Charles Leclerc, I think I'd like to see Charles Leclerc get up there. Um, is that how I pronounce his name? <laughs> Leclerc. No one really knows. No one really knows. <laughs> Leclerc if you're French. Leclerc if you're a bit more anglicised. I hope Charles Leclerc gets up there and comes in sort of in the top two or three drivers. And I'd be very interested to know how Sebastian Vettel fares after he's been sort of sideswiped by Ferrari. Yeah. We'll come to that in a minute. Was it Martin Brundle that suggested that Vettel might be on particularly good form now that he's made the decision to leave Ferrari? he may be kind of liberated and much less bothered by a situation and that might enable him to just concentrate on being a better racer so let's hope that happens let's hope to sort of freeze his mind and his racing will follow what we should do is go through each team and look at all their component parts including driver chassis engines any other assets the team may have but first of all let's just talk about the event itself we know pretty much how it's going to work it's going to be a similar weekend to normal in that there'll be practice on friday they'll be qualifying on saturday the race on sunday just in time for my birthday, I should point out. Thank you very much. This is the birthday present I wanted this year. And yet there'll be some other things that won't be the same. There'll be no driver's parade. The podium ceremony after the race may or may not happen. If it does happen, it's going to be weird. And the teams have been restricted, haven't they, on how many people they can bring to the circuit. A maximum of 80 per team. And their passes, did you know about this? Their electronic passes, which give them accurate access to the paddock will be cancelled every 24 hours i believe and then renewed when the team produce a document sort of an affidavit that says every member of the team has been tested is showing negative and hasn't got any symptoms that's a kind of a legal thing and as a man who recently worked on a tv production which got almost to air a live tv show and was cancelled at the last minute because one of the members of the production team tested positive for covid19 i understand how jeopardous this situation is we must be prepared For this weekend, if somebody does test positive over the weekend, which is possible, the whole thing could get pulled. Well, I read that it's been made clear to the teams that should anyone test positive, all the mechanics working on that particular car and the driver will be removed from action until they are able to provide a negative test. And, for example, Ferrari have been keeping both Sebastian Vettel's team and Charles Leclerc's team separate just in case that happens because they don't want them anywhere near each other in case they lose two drivers. (laughs) So I think a lot of teams are coming into the weekend with eyes wide open and making sure they do cross their T's and dot their I's to make sure that they don't leave themselves with no driver at all on the grid. Yeah, and I mean, I think they've planned this event around the possibility of somebody in the whole F1 circus testing positive at some point and they'll have planned it so that they don't have to cancel the whole thing just because one person test positive these mini bubbles of teams and there's no crowd there's no tens of thousands of members of the public there to be potentially put at risk by people working in f1 testing positive over the weekend so i think one doesn't want to make any confident predictions about the near future but i think it would take quite something for them to cancel it you know it wouldn't be just one or two people testing positive can you imagine though if a team did have a positive result and they had to pull that team. Oh, it must be galling in a short season for them. You know, they can't score points. Absolutely. I think F1 themselves would be devastated because there's a lot riding on them sort of salvaging their 
entire sport for the season. So it would be devastating for a lot of people involved, not only for the driver and the teams, the F1, but also the people watching, the fans. I mean, to be that taken away from them to watch all the drivers on the grid would be disappointing, really. I'm sure the teams will all have been very careful about mm about how they will have advised all of their team members to behave in the run-up to these races. I'd be very surprised if they haven't very strongly suggested that everyone is isolating more than they normally would. So whereas you and I are going down to the shops every few days to do a bit of shopping, I'm sure they'll have suggested that team members are probably more or less quarantining for a couple of weeks before these events and just seeing other team members and family members and being very careful about who they come into contact with. So, Do you know um, what just occurred to me? Yeah. You know, we've had an awful lot of cheating in Formula One over the years, and I know this isn't an area that you'd want to be cheating in, but somehow at the back of my mind, I've got a version of Formula One where Flavio Briatore is still running a team and he's trying to work out a way of cheating the positive results. No, no, it's negative. He's got 20 children who have never been exposed and he's getting samples from them and passing them over as, no, no, these are my team members. Uh, let's hope that he cheats in Formula One in that respect at the moment. Oh, God, that would be terrible. But, Sarah, you mentioned something a minute ago about the fans. Yes. And I know you watch a bit of football. Neither Zog or I watch football. <laughs> but there is a comparison here. Football has returned without fans. But they have added some atmos. They've put some creative ways to make it sound like like on air that there is hand laughter yeah yeah you know they put into that moss noise so it does sound like there's yeah, yeah. a crowd there which is quite clever really because most of the time when you watch football on tv you can hear the crowd noise to watch it there's obviously nobody in the stands so it's a bit weird not having a crowd actually there but at least you can sort of hear something so i don't know maybe they'll do that for the formula one do you think maybe but then mind you though when the race is on you do just hear commentary you don't really get that atmos you know i suppose it'll be weird not seeing all the fans in the crowd or on the stands but I think it will be a bit sort of weird slash disappointing not to have those sort of fanatic fans because come podium time that's the most exciting part especially the Italian Grand Prix it's so exciting when all the fans are there and the Ferrari flags and the fireworks going off it'll be a little bit of a shame but you never know I think they're going to make decisions as time goes on as sort of the world emerges from this lockdown and to see what's possible in terms of crowds and things like that. But you'd hope that we would get the fans back at some stage. So as much as at the beginning you think it's fine, you know, the race is going to go ahead and it'll still be exciting. But I think the fans will definitely be missed. Well, I think some of the football teams are allowing fans to have cardboard cutouts of themselves in the terraces aren't they oh, really? and there are other ways of having a presence where you can join in via zoom and they're piping the audio in via the big screens at the match oh yes a bit like goggle box yeah yeah they should do that for formula one yeah i know i think so too yeah they should have like virtual cameras so the director can just flash back to a group of people watching at home that would be interesting that'd be quite fun yeah we should all be able to join in via zoom that would be absolutely brilliant yeah we'll get some reporters on the ground in people's houses <laughs> Well, an historic day for Formula One as we finally return to racing. And while the COVID-19 pandemic means that there's no one in the grandstands here at the Red Bull Ring in Austria, thanks to the technology of Zoom, we're able to get a direct reaction from the fans themselves watching at home. We go live now to Julie Edwards' front room in Birmingham. Julie, hello. You are live on F1 TV to the world. What do you think of these first few laps? Oh, it's marvellous. It's great to have F1 back. And who do you think will win this race? George Russell. Ah, but George is currently running in 21st place and there's only 20 runners on the circuit. I know, but he's lovely and ever so quick. I reckon he'll carve through the field. He's driving a Williams, you know. Uh, yes, we do know. Uh, to Monaco now, where Jacques Grimaldi is watching in Monte Carlo. Monsieur Grimaldi, what do you think of that incident between Vettel and Charles Leclerc? This was the worst bit of driving I've ever seen. Vettel should be banned for hitting Leclerc like that. 
But it was Leclerc who drove at Vettel. Vettel was clearly the innocent party on this occasion. But Vettel should never have been in that position or Leclerc would never have hit him. Uh, he was ahead of him and on the inside. Like I said, outrageous! Well, there's nothing like independent objective reporting, and that was nothing like independent objective reporting. Over now to Alabama, where Billy Bob Winchester is in Huntsville. Billy Bob, are you enjoying the race? Get out of my living room. Uh, I just wanted to hear your thoughts on the race. Lewis Hamilton all the way. Woohoo! Make America great again. Uh, yeah, right. This is Peter Pitlane trying to report for F1. You know what they say, if you want a smart answer, don't ask the public. That's how we got Brexit. We are a matter of days away from the return of Formula One to real racing. And it's been so long, not only since the last race of last year in Abu Dhabi, but since testing in February that I can't even remember, and I'm not joking, who drives for what team? I'm absolutely serious. I kind of lost track. So let's go through from back to front. Let's start with Williams. And did you know they're racing as Williams Racing this year? That's all they're called. No sponsor title in their name. Oh, no sponsor, yes. Yeah, they just recently lost Rocket as their title sponsor. Who allegedly have gone to Mercedes, but I haven't seen that on their car, but we'll come to that in a minute. But their two drivers are, of course, George, perfectly reasonable Russell, and Nicholas, slightly unknown quantity, Latifi. What do you reckon, guys? Is it an improvement over Kubica and Russell last year? I think it's an improvement on Kubica. I think Nicholas Latifi, he'll be making his debut. He's waited a long time for it. Yeah. <laughs> so it'll be very interesting to see how he goes. I think they've probably made a good decision now. Now, in, in saying that, though, I don't know, have a detailed background of Nicholas Latifi, but I do know that they were a bit hamstrung with Kubica last year, weren't they? He was runner-up in Formula 2 2019, Latifi. There you go. George Russell, of course, is a fabulous young talent, and it's just a bit of a shame that he's not in a better car. I just hope that over the course of the rest of the season that he gets a chance to show how good he is and maybe improves his chance of getting a bump up to a better seat. I hope over the rest of the season, Williams are still flipping there because they're in such dire straits financially trying to look for a partner to either buy out the whole team or even part of it I'm concerned they won't make it through the season they literally won't be able to afford to turn up to some of the races that'll be a shame yeah well they're looking very vulnerable and this is not a great time to be looking for new money is it okay Sarah mm -hmm. tell us about the Renault DP World F1 team have you ever noticed that that's actually what they're called the Renault DP World F1 team no I didn't know it was that the Renault DP. I thought you were going to ask me to explain DP. <laughs> Yo, like, Sarah, can you explain know. DP? What does that stand <laughs> for, Sarah? What is it in your mind? What's that, Zog? Director of Photography. I heard it stood for something completely different, but actually... What did you hear, Gareth? Well... I heard something that's frankly unbroadcastable. And moving on. But yeah, but what I did find out that the real DP world are the world's leading provider of smart logistics solutions, enabling the flow of trade across the globe. There you go. That's what DP world are. What is it with Renault that they always have mysterious sponsors? Like, what was that one from South America? The insurance firm Mapfrey. Mapfrey. DP world is the new Mapfrey. All right, Sarah, tell us about the drivers. Come on. I know you want to. Well, obviously, got Daniel. Ricardo, <laughs> we'll give him a round of applause. Daniel Ray! Ricardo, yeah, thank you very much. Oh, yeah. Okay, no, so Daniel Ricardo has, on, Daniel. in the meantime, between now and the beginning of the year, is signed on with McLaren. So this is his last hurrah for Renault. Apparently, he's rocked up to Renault and no one's punched him in the face for changing teams. <laughs> so <laughs> I think they've all let that go and they're sort of now just focused on this year. And I think. They will want to get one up on McLaren, but then I suppose it's a bit different for Daniel Ricciardo, isn't it? Nevertheless, he's a competitive guy, and I 100% think that he would probably want to get ahead of the McLaren, and they'll probably want to get up there in the Drivers' Championships. So Esteban Ocon, he's had 12 months on the sidelines. He was a reserve driver, stimulated driver for the Mercedes last year after he got punted from... Hang on, Sarah. Did you just say stimulator driver <laughs> as opposed to... Stimulated, oh, no. 
We're back to DP again, aren't oh, we? Oh, no. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> that was too funny. He was a simulator simulated, driver. Simulated driver. Mind you. Gosh, it's been a long lockdown, hasn't it? A <laughs> <laughs> hundred days today. Wow. Yeah. I know. Losing my mind. Yeah, Estebanicon, Esteban as we Esteban used to call him. Our favourite. Estebanicon. Yeah, yeah. He's all right, isn't He's he? He's right. a good lad. I did read he also is. that Cyril Abitbol has been improving the Renault car as well. So I did read somewhere today that they've been working on their car too. So I think it's just it's going to be really interesting to see how sort of that middle playing field like the McLarens and the Renaults and the Racing Points and Alfa Romeo even go up against each other. So I'm excited to see that. And I'm also excited, if I can move away from Renault for a moment, that how it's going to go, you know, with the top three teams. But we are going to go through each team, aren't we, Gareth? I don't want to start diverging. Yes, we are. I wouldn't be, frankly, Daniel Ricciardo in the Renault team at the moment because you know how it works. Immediately that you sign for another team, whether you're the prime driver or not, the lead driver, you by default become the secondary driver because teams start withholding detail in terms of progressions on the car you know if they get an improvement on the car it won't go to you it'll go to your other driver i remember damon hill talking about this 25 years ago it's been around at least since then and before that even yeah so i think esteban acom in his well-known victorian bath chair is going to be given the advantage over Daniel. And so I feel for Ricciardo this year. It's going to be hard. And that Renault isn't a particularly strong package to start with. So, yeah, much as we love Danny Rick, he's not going to have much to work with, I think. Sorry, Sarah. But good luck to him. <laughs> well, just on Daniel Ricciardo, just before we talk about another team, him moving to McLaren, do you think that is, is his preferred choice rather than going to Ferrari? There was a bit of discussion around this, wasn't there? Yeah, well, I think I might have chosen... Personally, McLaren over Ferrari last year. But in the last week where there's news that McLaren have had to secure a £150 million loan just to keep going, I'm slightly worried that Danny may have made a poor choice and he could end up not being paid in a team who can't afford to keep going. I'm a bit worried about that. I don't know. I have faith in McLaren. And much as Ferrari is a tremendous prospect for any Formula 1 driver to go to, Ferrari can be a difficult team to work for you know the politics yeah yes pressure that comes with being a ferrari driver can be difficult and you know i'm not suggesting by any means that dan ricardo isn't a tough enough character but i think maybe his character maybe suits mclaren a bit better than ferrari but it's certainly a good move although he is italian <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, well, he's, I really want to see him in the, in the McLaren next year. I think it's going to be a great combine. Looks Italian. Uh, and him and Lando Norris together. That'll be lovely. Let's move on to the next team, though, first. We'll come to McLaren in a moment. Alfa Romeo Racing Orlen. That is the name of the next team. Now, who knows what Orlen is? Hands up. No, I didn't know either. Do you want to know? Yes. I looked it up. Orlen, it says here, the Orlen Group operates on six home markets in Poland, the Czech Republic, Germany, Lithuania, Slovakia, and Canada. It's an odd mixer, isn't it? It owns state-of-the-art integrated assets capable of processing more than 35 million tonnes of various... What's it going to be? Any guesses? They still haven't told us. Mm. We had a lot of words. We still don't know what they do. Yeah, yeah. Do they move things? Do they grow things? I would have guessed IT, but no, it's going to be, I don't know, good shipping stuff. Good guess. Sarah, what's your guess? Any idea? Oh, you know what? I'm going to just sort of sidestep it in guessing. <laughs> is that bad? No, not at all. You stay safe, Gil. Staying safe. Because the answer is, they still don't tell us by the next sentence. They give us a further clue. It says, processing more than 35 million tonnes of various crude types per annum. Oil. Correct. I was going to say oil if I had a guess. Oh, what a shame. Really? What a shame. Oh. <laughs> yeah, so now we know. And of course, I would imagine because of the Polish connection, this is why Kubica is now the reserve driver for the Alfa Romeo Orlen team. He's brought that sponsor to the team. So let's have a look. They've got two more than passable drivers. Kimi Raikkonen. Yeah, he is past his prime. Let's be honest and Antonio Giovinazzi he's quick but he's not entirely reliable would you say Alfa Romeo were in a better state than Renault though 
that's tough. We have got a stronger driver lineup. Yeah. Really hard to say. I mean, at this point, it's been so long since we've actually seen cars running in the real world. You know, we've just got to wait to see them hit the track and see how it shakes out. I tend to agree with what Zog is saying. They do have the stronger driver lineup, but I think Renault will do all right. I kind of think that they will end up ahead of Alfa Romeo Racing as a, as a solid punch. I think that sounds like hope rather than belief. Oh, really? Because you are ever so biased slightly opinion. biased. And that's fine. We all have our biases and that's perfectly healthy. Well, oh, come on. There's more than one brick on this grid. Yeah. So I have to give the Australian yeah. all the support that they deserve. Well, I'm back in the American driver, Lewis Hamilton. Oh, yeah. oh right. Oh. <laughs> Fair enough. Right, Alex. where are we next? Haas F1 team, sponsored by... Has no energy drinks involved here. Their drivers, remember them? Roman, don't crash into me, Grosjean, or Kevin Magnussen. Surely that's going to be their last season as drivers for Haas, isn't it? And how good is that car, the VF20, with its Ferrari 065 engine? What do you reckon, Z? Yeah, Haas are a funny outfit. They've shown flashes of really outperforming expectations, and then there are times when they just can't get it together. They're not very consistent. I'd like to see them have a slightly better rather than a worse spell now that we're getting back down to it. So so good luck to them. Sarah, do you wish Haas luck? Are they just going to make things more difficult for Renault in your eyes? No, I think, well, Haas last year, they finished like second last on the table. They finished in ninth place ahead of Williams. So anything better than ninth place for them would be a huge win, wouldn't it? Yeah, I think so. So, no, I'm still expecting Renault to be ahead of Haas. <laughs> but what I'm also looking forward to see is a lot of action from Gunther Steiner. Uh, yeah, yeah, we need more swearing from Gunther Steiner, don't we? More swearing from Gunther Steiner, rather, yeah. He's my favourite Haas team member. <laughs> yeah, he was a bit of a star of the second Drive to Survive yes, season, he? wasn't he? Actually, I discovered that an old mate of mine today actually works for the Haas team. So I'm going to get in touch with Dave O'Neill and find out what it's like working with Gunter. And I bet he says it's exactly as it is on the television. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> All right, we've got to move on because we're running out of time already. Let's have a look at BWT Racing Point F1 team with their RP20 chassis. And the power unit is actually badged BWT Mercedes. Did you know that? BWT are effectively sponsoring the engine mm. rather than the car. Intriguing. The two drivers, Sergio ever so good Perez and Lance I'm not driving because it's me dad's team Honest Stroll they've overperformed haven't they in the past and they've got some good money behind them and a new wind tunnel coming are they going to be the top middle team are they going to beat McLaren is the question this year well with the Mercedes engine they should be able to do okay don't you think well it's better than the Renault donkey McLaren have been on an upward trajectory though racing point good solid performers and given their kind of budget midfield status they tended to do very well but yeah i wouldn't bet on them beating mclaren right now which brings us to the next team in the grand scheme of things who we should have mentioned earlier on if i'm honest scuderia Alpha Tauri Honda, which I love saying. I do like Alpha Tauri as a name, or Alpha Tauri, as I'm sure most people will say. Boris Johnson's favourite team. They've got the Honda RA620H engine, and it's a new evolution of that engine as well. So this could really help. And again, Alpha Tauri, what used to be Toro Rosso, have always overperformed occasionally but not consistently which is why they are where they are they're two drivers Pierre Gasly who was demoted and Daniel Kvyat who himself had been demoted so this is a team who was sort of having to make do with demoted drivers it's a bit of a sad situation really how do you feel emotionally Sarah about Alpha Tauri do you care about this team well emotionally how do I feel I feel a bit like you I mean there's two demoted drivers that are just <laughs> still in there hanging on to F1, which so they should be, but you never know what's around the corner. They could, you know, blow it out of the park and get themselves back up into Red Bull Racing in no time because they have topped their drivers over a few times there with Alex Albon, yep. etc. So emotionally, I hope they do well and it'd be good to see those two drivers do well, particularly Daniel Kvyat. They've really put him through the ringer, haven't they? They have. It's a yo-yo team, Zog, isn't it? It's kind yeah, of the yo -yo team. up and down. Well, it's the Red Bull waiting room, isn't it? You know, <laughs> the Red Bull waiting room, the green and room. It's, it's interesting when you see drivers, you know, as you say, not just bumped up from Toro Rosso to Red Bull, 
but bumped down going the other way. And we've seen that sometimes it enables them to kind of get their head back in space where they can perform better when they're not quite under the same pressure that they're under at Red Bull. Scuderia second chance they should be called yeah. all right let's talk McLaren now as we get into the big hitters McLaren F1 team now that again is their official name no title sponsor which is incredible for a team of the status of McLaren the chassis is the MCL 35 the engine is the Renault E-Tech 20 only two teams using Renault power units on the grid one of the Renault squad itself the other McLaren the two drivers Lando Norris and Carlos Sainz Jr now again I wouldn't want to be Carlos Sainz in this team I think exactly the same rule applies if he's going to Ferrari next year then he's going to be kept out of certain loops within the company. Certain technologies he's not going to be allowed to hear about because that would be an advantage if he goes to another team. So he's going to be the default second driver this year, in my opinion, which can only benefit Lando Norris, who I actually think is brilliant. He is good. Yeah. He's a young talent, isn't he? Yeah, Very he is. popular yeah, as tremendous. well. They seem to love his off-track antics. He's a sort of little smart alley isn't he a very good driver he's been doing very well in the e-series actually hasn't he yeah i mean he raced at le mans too bless him mm. virtual le mans yeah he's been one of the stars of the e down season if you like and he's a great person he's a funny guy it's not surprising he's a fan favorite <gasps> tell you what would be good is seeing him in teammate with daniel ricardo two Absolutely. very sort of jovial characters so that, that's something to look forward to for next year which <laughs> isn't far away around the corner you just want to see those two boys kissing each other then you're man. that's all <laughs> that is i mean. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? They may even do that. <laughs> oh, hello. See it in your imagination. Let's move on <laughs> to the really big, 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 big players now. Now, the question is, in the grand scheme of things, I'm going to leave Mercedes to last, but who do I do next? I want you both to shout out at the same time. Do I do in the grand order of things now? Should it be Red Bull or it should be Ferrari? Which is the number three team? Shout your answer now. Ferrari. Red Bull. <laughs> I knew you'd disagree. All right, well, Sarah, I'm going to give you the preference, only because you got your answer in first. We'll do Scuderia Ferrari. Oh no, no, I think Red Bull might be able to a dark horse for second place this year. Ferrari just seemed to be all over the show last year, weren't they? They were. So, But they do have Charles Leclerc, who is outstanding. I know. I love him. You love him. Oh, My favourite. He's one of my faves, the old Charles Leclerc. He's got tremendous focus, I think. He really comes across as being tremendously serious and focused without being kind of too kind of wound up and intense. He's very relaxed. That's a good observation, Zog, I think. Yeah, he is. He's kind of chilled, isn't he? Yeah. And he was outstanding in Formula 2. But, you know, that's often the case but he has carried through his outstanding skills to Formula 1 and has ousted Sebastian Vettel who is a four times world champion so You've got to be good. And again, I feel for Vettel. Will he want to prove himself or will he just be blooming fed up? What do you think? I think this idea that he might be somehow liberated by having made the decision to move on and that that will help his racing. I think I'm on board with that. I think he is a driver who is perhaps slightly more affected than some others by his mental state. Yeah, I think that having made the decision to leave Ferrari, he's going to be slightly reinvigorated. He's going to be stronger than he was last year, probably. Okay. I think he'll try and start the season, as you say, Zog, but if things don't go his way... I think he might just become a bit apathetic. Yeah, well, this is the unknown, you know, how the dynamic between him and Leclerc plays out, you know, and Leclerc's a massively difficult teammate to be up against, Mm. as we know from Vettel's decision. Okay. The pretenders to the throne, I suppose, who are Aston Martin Red Bull Racing, still sponsored by Aston Martin, despite the fact that the Aston Martin money is really holding what used to be Racing Point, or what is still Racing Point together at the moment. No mention of Honda in the title of the team, but they've got that RA620H engine, which is a stonking engine by all accounts, and two stonking drivers. Alexander Albon, who I think surprised everyone. I, again, thought he was great in Formula 2, but I thought he delivered 
better in Formula One than we anticipated. And Max Verstappen, who has got to be a world champion in waiting, isn't he? Absolutely. Yeah, it's just a question of when. It's not going to be this year, but yeah, there are championships on the way for him and it won't be that long. Well, you'd hope so. It just depends on if the car is up to scratch. You know, he could have a driver that's of his ability or even slightly less and be in a better car. So I'd like to see him become a world champion, to your point. But you never know, I think, with this sport. A lot of it comes down to the car, doesn't it? Well, they've got a superb engineer, a designer in Adrian Newey. The chassis we know will be great. And by all accounts, this latest Honda engine has finally caught up and arguably, some say, overtaken the Mercedes block. So it really could be in the balance this year. So we've only got one more team to talk about because we've got to wrap this up quickly. Mercedes AMG Petronas F1 team. We all say Petronas, but it's not. It's Petronas, Petrol National of Malaysia. Uh, Mercedes AMG F1 M11 is the engine block and the car is the F1 W11. Lewis Hamilton and Valtteri Bottas Will Valtteri be able to beat Lewis is the question. No. Well, we know what the answer to that is. Yeah, as, <laughs> as Sarah rightly says, <laughs> no. no. no is a tremendous driver. And a tremendous bridesmaid. <laughs> yeah, but Lewis is almost untouchable. Yeah, Lewis definitely has preference in that team. And rightly so. And they'll be driving in black livery. Good. Yeah. That's right, yes. They have a new livery this weekend reflecting the current Black Lives Matter moment. Which is super cool, in my opinion. I think it's wonderful. I like it when they have new liveries for cars. I'm pleased that the Mercedes chassis has got a new look for this year. I think that's fantastic. But what it isn't wonderful, I'm going to finish with this now briefly, was something I saw on Twitter. Lewis tweeted a version of the LGBT flag. You know, that wonderful rainbow. And it had an additional triangle in the corner, which had brown in it and other colours. It kind of resembled the South African flag. And he just said, love is love. That was the message. And I thought, oh, bless you, Lewis. That's so sweet. You know, that's healthy and beautiful. And yet the responses, I read the vast majority of responses to that tweet were massively homophobic and largely from people who call themselves flipping Christians. I thought it was shameful. Really? Yeah. Yeah. And that redoubled my belief that the idea that the Mercedes, have you seen that they've reimagined their logo with the Mm. rainbow flag around it as well? That makes it more important than ever. Well, they're doing this first race as we race as one. That's a Formula One initiative. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Formula One or FIA initiative. Yeah. Formula One has come out and said that it will be a Formula One in- initiative that we race as one. So, yes, the LGBT rainbows and the Black Lives Matter movement all in one. So, yeah, Gareth, I, I do agree. I think you're right. A lot of people are very right-winged in their opinion. Horrible. but oh, There are a lot of dickheads in the world, you know. Yeah, but there's a lot of beautiful stuff about to happen as well. I think that message on the Mercedes team is great. The idea that Formula One is coming back and engaging with not only Black Lives Matter, but gay rights as well, that's absolutely beautiful. Okay, guys, one last thing before we finish. Who's going to win the race? Ooh. Lewis. Oh, this is Lewis. Really? No, no, no. Charles Leclerc. Okay. I'm going to say Lewis. I think Lewis is going to come out fighting because he does. And we'll find out very, very soon. You've been listening to Sarah Leach. Goodbye. Zog. Goodbye. And me, Gareth Jones. And we will be back with an extra episode of Gareth Jones on Speed next Thursday, reacting to the return of Formula One. Don't miss it. See you then. Bye. To send us an email, see pictures, get song lyrics, join our Facebook fan site, follow us on Twitter, or to find out about sponsorship opportunities, go to garethjones.tv. Gareth Jones on Speed is made in London by Whizbang. Get out of my living room. Gareth Jones!